Hello, everyone. Uh, Flores was right. Uh, he doesn't know what I'm going to talk about. Same with me. I don't know either. So it's fine. Um, I have a question for you all today. This is the uh, title of my talk, by the way. Um, okay, so what do electronic dance music, cannabis, and the International Space Station have in common? Being a young audience, I want to appeal to you, hence the slide. Now, <laughs> the thing that brings them all together is the cognitive shift that characterizes all of them. Whether you go on a concert where there's electronic dance music playing, or you chill out on 420 with your friends, or <laughs> you visit Orbit, you experience a cognitive shift and recontextualization of what it means to be human. Your mind changes in miraculous ways. The neurochemistry of your own brain becomes different. You become a different person. Don't worry. Nothing will happen if you have it once, but just don't get addicted to it, right? <laughs> oh, I, I'm talking about the other two, sorry. Um, then, um, now in this talk, because I'm kind of a boring person, I'm going to talk about the least exciting of all of them, I think. Space exploration, stars, reaching out for the stars and becoming one of the cosmos. Uh, this is an astronaut uh, in Apollo 17. He described the experience of looking down upon the Earth from uh, orbit as one of the deepest, most, most emotional experiences he has ever had. That's humanity, love, feeling, and thought. You don't see the barriers of color and re religion and politics that divide this world. This is what I will be focusing on in my presentation today because space has been something so central to civilization ever since the beginning. All ancient cultures have looked up at the stars and wondered and saw connections, saw constellations. David Bowie has sung about space and about stars in a dozen of his songs, Elton John. It's exciting, it excites all of us. My presentation will be uh, divided into three parts. First, I'll talk about the mind and us, then about society, and then about the transcendence that this promises. Essentially, this presentation is about big things, about the big picture. I know this makes a lot of the male members in the audience very happy. It's about the big picture. It's about the big things in life. <laughs> um, so, um, first part, high on space. Ever since the beginning of civilization, it has been a curiosity. It's intellectually seductive to look up at the stars and wonder what are the connections between them. So, people have studied this. Psychologists, clever cleverly have studied what is going on to astronauts when they reach orbit. And they call it the overview effect. It's the experience, wow. It's the experience of um, looking down upon Earth. Everything you could ever imagine before as a solitary blue marble floating in the darkness of space. It changes people. And then for us, since we cannot afford a rocket launch and we cannot go to orbit, it's similar to realizing that right now being in Bonbonier, we are also a part of this magnificent planet, Earth. And then this is a part of the solar system. And then this is a part of the Milky Way galaxy. And this is a part of the local galactic group. And this is a part of the Virgo supercluster. It's a, such a massive recontextualization of what it means to be present here. And I am explaining this to you rationally but we can only imagine what it feels like to be up there in orbit, looking at this personally and experiencing this on an emotional level. Now, this talk will revolve around this. I haven't been to space. I really want to one day. I hope it will happen. But I, I think it, an essential element of this is that a person as young as me, I turned 18 two days ago. So a person in, as young as me can share this passion and curiosity about outer space exploration that I think makes all of us a bit more human. The spirit of the caveman exiting the cave and opening his possibilities to the outer world is captured. It's reinvigorated with our present era of space exploration. Increasing numbers of commercial companies are reaching towards space. And what I'm going to be talking about is the psychological and spiritual aspect of this. And then, of course, how cool does this look, right? You know, the Earth is a pretty beautiful planet. Now I'm going to talk about society. Complex, uh, interesting. Um, I think Kanye West said we live in a society. That's a quote by him. <laughs> I think, yeah, we have to have at least one Kanye quote in a good TED talk. At least, I hope. 
<laughs> yeah, following Kanye's insights, uh, this is Ray Kurzweil's insight about the technological progress. On the y-axis, we can see the uh, calculations, the calculation power per thousand dollars, and we can see time on the x-axis, and we can see that technology is increasing at an exponential rate. This is the big picture. We're increasing, we're going forward at an accelerating rate. Things that used to take decades now take months. That crazy idea about the future you have is probably gonna happen sooner than you think. There's some other statistics uh, from people that are smarter than me who have done the work um, at Our World in Data uh, indicates how the child mortality rates are falling and the life expectancy globally is increasing and the literacy rates are skyrocketing. Less and less people can uh, not read anymore and there are some important things that we should focus on now. Knowing that statistics in all these parameters are improving, then we can really boil our society down to what we actually need to do. What are some challenges we need to face right now? Air pollution. The country I come from, Macedonia. The capital in December reaches levels unprecedented anywhere on the planet. I actually had a bet with my roommates that I would buy the McDonald's once it reaches the worldwide charts. And it's quite a terrifying statistic. And worldwide as well, as you can see, the annual deaths are increasing. Climate disaster, the CO2 emissions are increasing. And we don't know what to do about this. These are challenges that are happening in the world, but for some reason we seem to be focusing on other things. This is a mathematician. A few days ago, she won the Abel Prize in mathematics, the highest, pres most prestigious award in mathematics. Um, her name is Karen Uhlenbeck, sorry for the bad pronunciation, and this was a major event. She is American. So me, being the curious and inquisitive person that I am, decided to do some research. <laughs> I looked at Google Trends, and I saw the uh, search trends in the United States the week that she won the prize. What did I find? Here's proof you didn't need that tackle fall is tall. Lady Gaga and Jeremy Runner have reportedly been hanging out. <laughs> very cool, I'm very happy for Lady Gaga and uh, I'm jealous of tackle fall. And these are worthwhile things to talk about, of course, but in the light of something so tremendous happening, the frontiers of mathematics being pushed forward, perhaps I would expect to see some more engagement on these topics. And this is expected. I will not judge you if you Google Lady Gaga after this talk. These are important things that attract attention. And they're explosive. And this is what is important in our media dominated world. What matters is how important something is, uh, what matters is not how important or relevant something is, it's how attention um, inducing it is. And this is the fundamental law of our internet age. Attention always, always dominates over um, relevance. And sometimes relevant things can be very attention grabbing, of course, but the general rule of thumb is that our media algorithms and the way that our world is structured around, around these uh, social media outlets really dictates that our attention is always centered towards Lady Gaga and not Karen Uchlenbeck. And this is, a truth that we should accept, which is what makes me extremely excited for what's to come. Because now we can, f we can see a lot of problems. We can see problems in every single area of life. And people focus on these things because they grab attention. Me talking about Trump's hair would be extremely interesting for a lot of people. And this is why a lot of topics nowadays that are maybe not even that important really dominate our media landscape. The fear of immigrants dominates the acceptance that we are hardwired to have because the narratives that we create with our social media, with our media, are centered towards this fear mongering because that's what generates clicks, that's what generates attention, and that's what brings profits. Reality is a narrative construct. I came across this realization while I was doing my research for my extended essay, which is a thesis paper we make in our school. And um, there's a fascinating paper 
by Jerome Bruner at the University of Chicago talking about how reality is a narrative construct. We can be as objective as we want in our pursuits, but always our perception of what is real and what is not boils down to stories. Stories dictate what is true. Stories dictate our decision making. Finally, we are at an age at which the stories around our existence can be remodeled. We are reaching for the stars. This picture was taken by the Apollo 8 crew on their first orbit around the moon. It's called Earthrise. It's one of my favorite photos. It changed the world forever. In 1948, there was a British astronomer who said that once a picture of the Earth from outside becomes available, a new idea as powerful as any in history will be unleashed. And this is what happened. Our global awareness as a result of the space program of the United States and of Russia, our collective consciousness improved. This right here is a picture by the Voyager probe. It is the most distant object ever sent by humans. It is traveling right now at 62,000 kilometers per hour and has exited our solar system. Right before that, Carl Sagan, while he was still alive, one of the pioneers of science communication, convinced the mission control crew to turn it around and take a picture of the Earth. And you would guess the Earth is pretty invisible here. Talking about periphery, what is the periphery and what is the center here? You tell me. Our Earth-centered world is coming to an end. We are bridging our gap with the stars and we are realizing our fragility. Because so far, our economic narratives, our media narratives, our fear towards the neighbor, our fear of someone of different color, were built on the presumption that humans are everything there is. As you reach for the stars, you realize the fragility of our tiny blue marble and perhaps shift our decision making. This is a chart of all the missions that has constituted modern space exploration. There are more even now. This is an old infographic. We're reaching for the stars at an increasing rate. We know about the accelerating world. We know about our predisposition to be in love with the stars and intellectually seducted by them. And now it's up for all of us to be open for this experience. I am 18 years old. I haven't worked at NASA. I haven't worked in the Russian space agency. But I feel incredibly privileged to be talking about these things because I think everyone should go to your friends, talk about these things. This is a huge step for the entire human race because it not only will we get to mine asteroids and to inhabit other worlds, but the mere fact of us reaching for the stars and becoming a multi-planetary species enables us to see us as a civilization in another light. And this is the essence of space exploration, the cognitive shift that arises. The cognitive shift will serve as a, as a foundation for a new homo sapiens. It's a bridging stone towards something greater. I think us as humans with the DNA that has remained un uh, unevolved ever since the cavemen will need this cognitive upgrade, this, this um, push towards something great, towards the numinous. And increasing numbers of re number of research has been done on this. I hope that all of us will experience the grandeur of what it means to be a spacefaring civilization. I find it far more exciting than any other al alternative that will happen to humanity. And it's a good thing. Ultimately, we can all walk away from this place knowing that us reaching for the stars enables us to see ourselves in a different light which is ultimately the goal of life as well. As you grow, you see yourself in many different versions and you get to know yourself more. Who said that humans know what they are before they actually look at themselves, right? So space travel constitutes a cultural revolution for humanity. We can mine asteroids, we can send astronauts to orbit, we can colonize Mars, but the essence of this is that we become, we becoming a spacefaring civilization is a cultural revolution and it reconstitutes our entire um, paradigm around what being human means. And this is what it's about. Thank you very much for listening and for being an engaging crowd. I appreciate 
your tennis shots.